A very warm welcome to you all and good morning. Goeiemorgen and your allemaal and baie welkom. Today is the 15th of October 2022 and as always please remember to press the like button, share, subscribe and press that notification button for our latest videos. Uh, today I'm going to talk uh, briefly on, on five things. Uh, firstly, um, I'm going to talk about handling criticism uh, in general uh, and then of course uh, there's uh, unfounded slander about uh, Southland Defence and Southland uh, civilian members uh, or the organisation. Then quickly again on the judiciary system, uh, what has happened in the last few uh, two, two weeks. And of course, just again on ESCOM and the coalition agreements between the DA, EFF and ANC. All right, uh, handling criticism among our people in our circle and family and, and friends is something that's a challenge for all of us. Uh, and especially for someone like myself making videos and others uh, that I'd like to discuss because uh, it's important to bring this out so that you all know what we're dealing with uh, across the board. I received a WhatsApp uh, about a week ago um, from a person I know well and uh, it just said um, it had a photo of my previous uh, video footage of uh, Mission Impossible and there was uh, a comment Yay Lake uh, and question marks and then there was a second WhatsApp message saying Colonel and then of course WhatsApp uh, uh, question marks three question marks in red in bold okay this then obviously followed with a phone call and then during the conversation it was mentioned to me from this person that I look very old and tired and uh, uh, the rank of colonel uh, is not going to fly with me or the organization <clears throat> so obviously you know one listens and, and carries on with the conversation but it's very disturbing to hear something like this um, you know what was the person's intent for engaging uh, and carrying over this criticism uh, of the Southland organization or Southland Defense organization and uh, our, our rank uh, because look we're not uh, we're not doing this um, other than for the safety of our fellow South Africans and um, the post is what's important. Uh, the post that we carry uh, in in times of anarchy and the job that has to be done. However, that said, I did mention to this member that uh, the South African National Defence Force is not the only organisation in the world that can qualify senior officers. Uh, there, there are many organisations and countries that present qualifying courses uh, for for their qualifying posts and personnel. So obviously um, I uh, decided, and this is a fine line, I decided sometimes uh, one should uh, reserve comments and other times you know you have to say what needs to be said. So I just followed up uh, the conversation and message with a message saying that uh, this person needs some counselling um, because he's got serious jealousy issues um, and what's interesting in the same period in the same day there were other comments from this person's circle of friendship um, that was sent to me <clears throat> on Facebook and I want to read this one it said uh, if my memory serves me well uh, you were one of the many who left the Defence Force and could not live with the changes that took place. You were never a colonel then and you're not a colonel now. What a disgrace like many others. I mean, really? What, what's wrong with these people? Why do they live in the past? Uh, they have to accept change. And uh, 
you know, what's this all about? Why do people help you uh, and at the same time criticize you? I mean, it neutralizes the whole effect uh, of an, an effort and engagement between the, the, the different parties. Uh, obviously, you know, jealousy is playing a role here and this creates division and we don't need this sort of stuff. So what's the solution? Uh, how do you address this, this sort of behavior from our very own? I find it absolutely shocking that in these tragic times in this country of ours that uh, we still act like this towards one another when we're only trying to help one another um, with what's going on in the country. So let me hear your comments on, on, on that part of criticism. And it's the same with, with friends and, and family. Um, uh, we don't need this criticism. We should be more building and helping one another. Further to this, I want to also mention there was, a, there was another improper and uh, unfounded slandering about the Southland and Southland Defence Organisations. And I want to read it to you. And it came more or less from the same source. If one listens to your contri continuous BS on, about or on the Southlanders, then one can only say that you are the most self-centered and critical person in the country. Why on earth are you so negative about everything that is happening in this country? Do you really think people will continue to listen to your negative propaganda just to scare them of everything that's happening in South Africa? You must catch a serious wake up. You're definitely the, the worst influencer among the people which are the members of the Southlanders. But like every, every normal thinking person who are members of the Southlanders, they will eventually realize that this is all just a, and this is now going to say in some regards, ho ho mark for Baba Bong. And that you are only doing this for money. You're probably not a Christian that believes in the power of God. Now, I've covered all this stuff in previous videos. Um, but yes, it needs to be mentioned because this is what's going on. And this is why we can't get joint momentum going forward. Further, the, the message goes as follows. Uh, grow up and do something positive for the country. Because you're really failing dismally with your attempt to earn money by scaring people. Now, I've heard this from many people also. Now, let me read that again. With your attempt to earn money by scaring people. With a lot of future BS seen by some idiot called Sinner. Now, viewers, let me hear your comments. Again, I find this absolutely shocking that we are like this with one another when we are doing our best to get out the message to, to, to warn everybody about what's going on. Are you also experiencing this sort of criticism and slander among your own friends and family and business associates? All right, uh, then I want to talk about the Savican judiciary of late with the political parties and the shocking state of affairs there. Uh, if we look at ex-president Jacob Zuma's record in the presidency uh, is one of corruption and fraud, money laundering, uh, tax evasion. He also sang those machine gun songs, if you remember well. And we also uh, know of the latest medical parole status. And uh, ex-president Jacob Zuma just gets off the hook with everything. But strangely now, a turn in the judicial system is that Zuma is taking legal action against the state prosecutor advocate Billy Downer and the legal journalist Kerry Morgan. And who's representing this whole circus is advocate Dali Mpofu. And he's representing Zuma uh, and is also a member of the FF. And if you can remember well, he was uh, or has ha had active services with the Judicial Service Commission. This is why the whole judiciary is a joke. Um, so this is exactly why our, our judiciary is in an absolutely shocking state uh, and why our constitution, uh, where our constitution clearly spells out our responsibilities, but you don't see it in the judges and you don't see it in the courts 
and this is why you have a, a unfair balance in law if we look at uh, our present uh, president Cyril Mopoza we know well that during the United Nations a few years ago he said there's no farmers that are being killed now we know recently in in August and, and September we've had 15 murders farm murders uh, I haven't seen President Cyril Mopoza uh, call the assembly and uh, ask for urgent attention with us with the Minister of Police and the Commissioner of Police Services we also know under Cyril Mopoza's watch that all the state enterprises and mu municipalities are totally have, have totally collapsed under his watch and that he has taken no action uh, towards these members at the various councils. The uh, Pala Pala farm incident of the money, similar, uh, and that the state president hasn't executed his roles and duties as per our constitution. So the judiciary is only for the poor uh, and, the, uh, and not for the political elite. Now, a classic example that I'd like to mention with our judiciary is Julius Malema and the Penny Par uh, Sparrow case, if you remember well. Uh, just a quick uh, quick recap. Uh, Penny Sparrow was in KwaZulu-Natal, the South Coast. She was a real estate agent there and she was found guilty of hate speech in the Equality Court in 2016 uh, and ordered to pay 150,000 Rand uh, to the Adelaide, Adelaide and Oliver Tambu Foundation for being the first person to be found guilty of criminal injuria for a racist slur in post-apartheid South Africa. Fine, what she did was wrong. Um, she acted on the moment. Uh, but what happened after that um, in the um, Equality Court and in the criminal courts is that at the end of the day, uh, with all this stress, she uh, had cancer, as I would see this thing, and obviously she passed on. <clears throat> But uh, why has the judiciary and the national pr prosecuting authorities not acted the same on Malema as they had done with uh, Penny Sparrow? I mean, here we have Malema uh, with the Afri Forum case on kill the boer, kill the farmer, and he was acquitted. Similarly, with the assault on the white police officer, the Lieutenant Colonel, he was acquitted there again. This uh, public platform where he took the AK-47 and shot rounds in the air nothing happened where's the police where's the national prosecuting authorities where's the judiciary on this one and also all the numerous public uh, platform hate speeches by Malema haven't been acted against by any police force by any national prosecuting authorities and basically if you look at all the past uh, weeks to, to a month or two's uh, court hearings this carries uh, the judicial's approval. And what's interesting is all the judges that don't come out in newspapers, all the South African judges, uh, they don't say anything. Nobody comes up and says, no, there's a problem. You see, they all protect one another. Or I think, more, in all likelihood, I think they're scared. Uh, and that's why they all remain quiet. They don't know what to do. And that's why I've said in previous videos, our judiciary is underdeveloped. Now, this judge, Molaleni, uh, has blood on his hands because he's passed a ruling um, and he didn't apply common sense because our constitution spells out clearly what he should be doing and our court should be doing. So, yeah, for the seven murders in August and the eight murders in September, uh, that falls under his watch. And uh, the, the interesting part is <clears throat> what's his punishment? For allowing this uh, kill the farmer, kill the boer, uh, hate speech go um, without any accountability taken on Malema. Yes, let me hear your comments on this one. Um, these farm murders are absolutely shocking. They continue, and um, we still have viewers that will criticise us for mentioning this and um, for keep bringing the uh, negative situation of the country down on the people. Uh, but that's our job. Uh, we are watchers, I've mentioned this before, um, <clears throat> we're, not more, we're not the gatekeepers, we're watchers. We have to tell you what's going on so that uh, you're prepared. So looking at this uh, judiciary issue, 
we can see see clearly that uh, we are in state capture and that we are run by a mafia state. Touching on ESCOM with the newly appointed board members, I see this as follows, and I'd like to use a, a descriptive um, picture here. We're looking at a vehicle, a very, very old vehicle. And uh, the CEO is the driver of the vehicle, and the board members are the passengers. Your chairman is sitting on the left. So we have passengers in a very, very old vehicle, which is Eskom. Can this vehicle be fixed? I mean, technology has changed, and uh, there's just everything is different electronics electrics on a on a vehicle so this escom vehicle has to be rebuilt it's not possible to fix it um the organization is too big the uh there's too many rotten apples in the barrel so this mission uh um, or this task that these board members must put together it's not going to happen so that's a shocking state uh that at the end of the day they keep saying, the ESCOM board members keep saying that they can fix ESCOM, but we know well they can't fix it. It's gone to, it's gone past the point of fixing. Then the last thing I want to talk to you about is the coalition agreements and the crisis we're sitting with all these coalition governments uh, in Gauteng and elsewhere. Is, I've mentioned this before on the previous videos that uh, these coalitions can't work. Um, they can't work. Uh, Ham Mashaba left the DA to start Action SA. Now he wants to leave Action SA. These guys can't work together. There's no leadership. Um, Muzi Mai Mani wants to do his own thing as well and he was in the DA and he was given the DA. Nobody can work together. The ANC is, is stealing. The FF wants to uh, nationalize everything. All the coalition governments want to be presidents or the, the leaders of their parties want to be presidents. Everybody's doing their own thing. What a mess. What a shocking state of affairs. So yes, uh, that's the reality. We have uh, uh, very wealthy business people in the country. We know who they are. And uh, they all want to do the right thing and do the good thing and try and fix the country. The problem is the mindset at the grassroots levels isn't there to build. Uh, it's, uh, um, everything must be for free um, and if they don't get it, it gets burned down and uh, the state must look after them. And that's the mindset that we've got. We haven't developed a culture that you need to look after yourself. Um, you know the old saying where um, if you give a man a fish, um, you feed him for the day, but teach him how to fish, you feed him for life. That principle, that very basic principle, is not in uh, our society, it's not in our culture. And that's why we're always going to have hand in the hand, or hat in the hand, <clears throat> and keep asking and keep, and keep begging uh, for money. But we're not helping ourselves. Yes, there is a solution for everything in this country, but the mindset is not there. There are individuals that want to fix it, but if you take all the role players together, they don't want it fixed. They want chaos so that the uh, profits uh, on the other side of the waters are more. So viewers, yes, the situation in the country is an absolute shocking state. And what's even worse is the respect that we have for one another also remains a massive challenge. So what's the way forward? Well, the power is with you. You know the power is with you. Uh, we keep letting uh, our political leaders do and say what they want, uh, but we remain quiet and we do nothing. Now, Richard Branson always used to say is, you are who you think you are, just do it. And that's why I'm saying you need to join us. We have a national emergency plan initiative that kicks in uh, when the government can no longer guarantee your safety. In times of anarchy, Please follow the links below to join us. Again, please like, share on all possible and available platforms. Subscribe and press that notification button for new videos. And as I always say, please remember that 10, 10, 10 policy. Uh, you inform or pass this video on to 10 people and ask them to pass it on to another 10 people. And that's how we get our message out. 
The social media is, a, is an excellent platform. We know that the mainstream media is controlled and this is our best way of informing you of what's going on in the country. And uh, just take note, we do care about you. Um, yes, the criticism is not nice. Uh, it'll be ongoing. Um, different curveballs will be thrown, but we'll have to manage them like that. Okay, uh, look forward to talking to you all again soon. Stay well, keep safe, uh, keep sharp, tot ziens and groeten.